So how did we shift from homo ludens and possibly homo neurons or even homo traditionalis to homo economicus? Right? And this article talks about how in the 16th and 17th centuries there was a desire among managers to stamp out passion, to stamp out playfulness, right? to turn people basically into human resources in a very literal sense of the term, to turn your workers into the workhorses of the organization. And one of my favorite examples, quite frankly, is Frederick Taylor. Right? When he does, what he describes is a bunch of workers at different places, um, you know, places where they were shoveling coal or melting pig iron, different things. And he asked them, how do you do this work? And they would explain it and they'd say, why do you do it this way? And they'd say, because that's the way we've always done it. That's our rule of thumb. And Taylor was really obsessed with stamping out these traditional ways of doing things and doing them in an efficient way, the way that generated the greatest amount of income for the organization. I do believe, though, that Taylor kind of was like a sort of a homo ludens because of the fact that he encouraged workers, if they had a better idea, they could try it out and they could work with a manager to try to embrace that new idea. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. But So what you see is, especially as we start developing factories and all this other kind of stuff, the ability to be creative or playful really disappears. And quite frankly, you think about the way most of you probably speak uh, with your boss. Your boss tells you, you do this, and you do that. That's homo economicus in action. You are the manipulable homo economicus. You are the object of the organization in which you work. You exist for their benefit. So, it's a fly. But you think about how maybe people were operating in the Middle Ages. Think about how powerful homo neurons was, right? People told stories. That's what brought people together. That's what brought communities together. That's what motivated people. Again, think about something like the Bible, which is full of stories, and people could relate to those stories, and they could contribute to those stories, and they could live those stories, right? Homo neurons in action. And then the playful man, as I mentioned. You see this a lot with children, but also in pre-industrial societies. People wonder, can I try that? Does that work? Who knows? Let's see Let's see how it works. So this is kind of how um, homo ludens has been gradually stamped out. And he gives some different types of people who stamp out homo ludens on page 389. He mentions the bureaucrat, the administrator, um, the managerial entrepreneur, um, etc. So uh, another part of homo economicus is that it assumes that people look after themselves exclusively. So the homo economicus um, does not necessarily uh, society has very little responsibility towards the homo economicus. Um, the homo economicus is responsible exclusively to him or herself, so the accountability is on uh, the man. Great! So hopefully you enjoyed this video. We're, our next video we're going to look at the concept of desertos, space, and place. I'll see you in the next video.